Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to my talk on the last day. I know a lot of people have uh, had a long week. Uh, my name is Kieran Bingham. I work with Ideas on Board, and since 2018, we've been working on a uh, piece of software called LibCamera, uh, which we've already given a few talks about, about the inner details. Um, but today, I'm trying to look at the uh, user's point of view of that. And uh, the title is Application Support with LibCamera. I don't want it to be too negative, but it's partially the lack of application support with LibCamera. But I'm trying to focus on the positives and, and where we can go from now that we've got uh, the stack usable. So these are the topics I'd like to cover. Uh, cameras have become complex. Uh, I'll try and introduce that quickly um, and how we interact with vFRAL2 and how cameras have become complex. Uh, I'll look at what we've created and what we already have available, and uh, then look at some of the applications that have started to use LibCamera and how that's uh, now possible. And I'll talk a bit about the demo. We did a demo on Wednesday, uh, two demos on Wednesday, using LibCamera, uh, and I'll try and cover that a bit as well. Uh, and then uh, one of my many hats has been community support, and uh, I field a lot of questions from people trying to now use LibCamera, uh, and so that's driven a part of this uh, talk. Uh, and where I want to go after that is making sure that everyone can use LibCamera easily to use the cameras. Uh, a lot of my talk actually references work done by other people. In no means do I want to claim credit for work that other people have done. So unless I've actually said I did this, I'm probably already talking about work that people, other people have done. I'm not going to take credit for writing Chromium, for example. Um, and I've used lots of logos, and, and they're all their trademarks. So cameras are becoming more complex. In the beginning, there was uh, a lovely world where you would, applications would talk to one device. Uh, UVC cameras are a single video node. And even as we introduced the SOC camera uh, implementation, which began to support MIPI CSI connectors uh, and these complex camera environments, down on the left, even that was exposed to a single video node, and it could be controlled easily from uh, an application. Back in 2009, that soon grew to a much more complicated graph. We've got uh, sub-devices for the sensor, uh, VCM for lens focus. Um, then we've got an ISP with both inputs and outputs. And, and the complexity grew. That is in 2009. Whilst we have some ISPs that are maybe of that order of magnitude, we're talking to uh, ISP vendors now with, let's say, one or two times magnitude uh, greater complexity with one that has 96 DMA nodes. So imagine if your application had to open up 96 slash, slash dev slash video all the way up to 96 to operate the camera, and it's, it's impractical. So applications can choose to manage all that themselves, and some do. Uh, we, we do have, uh, I know of examples that already do that. And they can open the media graph. There's a media controller system which exposes all of these objects. And you can open that device to get the links and entities. And then the application can open the sub-devices, configure them, and get the video nodes. It doesn't scale. And particularly in the example that I know exists, uh, they have to have manual configuration for each uh, platform they support. Um, and that support that they add only works for their application. So on that device, they can't then do a web call or, or connect GStream through the support they add. Uh, it only works for their application. So it just doesn't scale. We created LibCamera to make sure that all of that management can be handled in a central place. And LibCamera itself doesn't look simple from that frame, but uh, all of that is majority in the internals of LibCamera, which helps the ISP vendor or the silicon vendors implement this support. And we provide lots of uh, framework to uh, handle all the common commonalities between platforms, moving buffers, allocating memory, uh, configuring the stream. Um, the little section on the, in green is the part that vendors can create to support the platform. So now all that complexity uh, is handled within a single place. And in this slide, applications can sit up on the top, so uh, they don't actually have to worry about everything below. So that's our solution, but why did it come to be? Uh, everybody loves V4L2. 
It is um, mature, stable. Uh, I was chatting to Hans last night. Uh, I believe he's been involved since 2003, uh, Marrow a little bit before that. Uh, the designs uh, or originated in 1998, and the patches were merged in mainline around 2002. Maybe don't quote me too much on the exact dates, but it was that order of magnitude. And it provides an easy way for applications to get a video. That's what they want. That's what video uh, for Linux provides. Uh, it handles the formats and the configuration. And it's the same whether it's a camera, a set-top box, uh, an HDMI receiver. Um, I hope it's not too cheeky, but it, it, everyone loves it because it's there. Um, there may be other implementations for dealing with hardware out of tree, but in Linux, we have vfrl 2 That's the, the go-to system for applications to use to get video. Uh, and it's well used, so we know it works well. Um, because it's been around for so long, absolutely everyone uses it. Uh, Existing camera applications, VLC is very happy to open up slash dev video zero and present your webcam in a little box and you can see your picture. There's dedicated uh, camera applications like Cheese uh, or GUVC view that I often use for testing. And some of those can be based around multimedia frameworks which handle the underlying hardware or interaction or even the VFL2 implementation for you like GStreamer. I should really have had FFmpeg in there as well but it threw off my symmetry. <laughs> um, then on top of that, we've got the application frameworks like Qt or GTK, which uh, again provide applications an easy way to access all of this for you. Uh, OpenCV uh, comes up a lot with cameras for uh, what we do, so that's an important one to consider there as well. So that kind of covers the use cases where users want to get a picture, either display it or then process it. Of course, on the right, Everyone's using that in the consumer use cases now with their laptops or phones, uh, making video calls uh, or the browsers accessing the video directly. All of that is looking fundamentally for a V4L2 video device within Linux. Uh, for the browsers and uh, native apps, quite often that's going through LibWebRTC, which is very important in a moment. So I started with everyone loves V4L2, but uh, as the complexities have grown and the software has evolved, uh, it's become more difficult to use. Uh, and what I think everyone really loves is Video Zero. Application wants to open one thing, configure it, and get their pictures. It's really easy. It's what I used to use, and um, that's what people or applications like to expect. As we built up the complexity of multiple uh, Subdevices and, and configuring hardware specifically, we introduced the media controller. Uh, I remember when I first come, came across media controller, I was uh, thrown back by, oh, I have to do all of these extra steps, and the command lines are so tricky to get right if you have to custom write, uh, write custom scripts. Uh, the formats can be really tricky. Uh, on top of that, you are now responsible for making sure that the desired format you want as an output is propagated all the way through every device in, in your stream. Uh, and that can be quite tricky. It's fine if you want a single use case. You can hard code that. You do it all the work once. You hard code it in a boot up script. Um, but to do that generically for an application that just says, I want a picture and I want my camera to work on every platform, becomes very difficult. Uh, the subdevices, you now have direct control over a scalar or um, a format converter but you have to know where to look in the pipeline and which device to configure and how to then configure it or find it. And even my beloved UVC, uh, which was once the simple case of just one single video node, now has a, a second video node that you can open and uh, access more data from the camera. Uh, and you have to know that. And, and when that was introduced, some applications became confused because they, they see video zero and video one, they try to open video one thinking it's a second camera, but it's not, it's actually still the same camera. And so even then as we go into the, the types of cameras I deal with, which are the MIPI CSI receiver, uh, MIPI CSI cameras, uh, we have uh, for an offline ISP, we'll have a CSI2 receiver to capture the raw frames, we'll have an ISP with, uh, that we then have to inject those frames and pass them uh, from one device to another. Uh, that may then give us multiple outputs. We might get uh, parameter buffers, uh, sorry, statistics, 
uh, and multiple streams, different configurations from a single uh, capture might give you different images. Uh, on the latest hardware that we've got from uh, Rockchip and NXP, for example, we have yet another block after that. So now we have to go through three devices to get an image, and it adds a lot more to each application to deal with. Even further, vFrol 2 isn't enough on its own because the underlying hardware, the sensors, need to be configured for uh, the exposures and the gains. Uh, and that requires some control loops. So we have to capture an image. We have to run it through the ISP. The ISP will tell us some statistics and some, some information about whether it's too bright, too dark. And we use that information to then make adjustments to the camera. So now we have a control loop and, and a feedback loop that we have to do, and that's not appropriate to handle in the kernel. Uh, so that is expected to be done in user space. Uh, and these types of devices are now in everyday devices. They are in your mobile phones, but uh, Android kind of covers that separately. But there are laptops you can buy, uh, tablets, and if you want to put Linux on one of those devices, uh, then you have all of this complexity. So these issues are uh, rapidly becoming more apparent to uh, the average Linux user. I'm not sure what an average Linux user is, but... <laughs> um, on top of the now consumer-facing products, we, we've had this issue for quite some time. Um, embedded systems have been using CSI cameras for quite some time now uh, and bringing in these extra, extra functionality. Uh, and I've, I'm now, well, we're, we now have uh, mobile phones that are targeting Linux. Uh, there's the Purism and Librem uh, making devices that actually target a Linux stack. And the mobile phone market really wants to cut costs and improve image quality. And you get that by having these ISPs where you get full control over the image. Of course, with Android, a lot of this can be tackled with a proprietary stack and is often tackled with a proprietary stack. But within the Linux community, we, 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 try, we want to avoid that. So it's all well and good saying that vFrel2 needs more and that we've got a solution for libcamera available. But now applications have to do something different. And they, they don't like that. I, I, I felt a lot of resistance. Um, suddenly, um, application, or applications find that their users are saying, hey, I want my application to run on a Raspberry Pi with a new Labor camera stack. And this can come as an unexpected uh, event to software maintainers. It's like, why do they now have to do something new? It worked before. Um, so it does take effort. Now applications have to do something new. Uh, part of that has, uh, it, within the community support role I've had, uh, I, I do remember it. I, I now quite often write C++ code, but I remember that it was scary. So applications that run C code, they can be quite hesitant of the plus. Um, and libcamera is a written in C++. We, do expect more at language bindings, but that's kind of our native implementation. Uh, and the one that is uh, more painful is, have we finished? Well, the truth is, no, we haven't ever declared a release. We do have uh, version tags, and I'll come on to that later. Uh, but we've tried not to be ABI stable because we know we're still developing. We've got a lot of work to do, and we know we've got fundamental designs that we have uh, in mind, which are going to break the API. And that adds further uh, pain to uh, anyone wanting to move to libcamera. So I want to go over uh, a little bit about what you can do. I, 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 like I said, I don't want to be too negative. You can already use libcamera. Yeah, there are solutions uh, already out that are working. Um, we use it for testing, and uh, on Wednesday, I, I, I made a demo which I hope can show that it's soon ready for the average user. Uh, if someone asked me, how do I get started with the libcamera, I'm probably going to point them at GStream to start with because of the uh, extra ecosystem that you get with that. If you're trying to make an embedded application, um, 
GStreamer provides all the things that LibCamera is not going to do. We're not going to encode the stream. We're not going to uh, send it out on the network. And that's somebody else's responsibility. Uh, and we're not going to deal with audio. <laughs> so um, other frameworks, and that could be FFmpeg too, if uh, we get integration into FFmpeg, uh, can all be handled through uh, frameworks on top. And we do have uh, already an element which was written by uh, Nicolas to uh, integrate LibCamera with the GStreamer pipeline. Um, it's been a bit clunky up till now, but we've just had a summer of Google Summer of Student, uh, sorry, a Google Summer of Code student over the summer improving that for us, which has fixed a lot of the format negotiation, which I, I really hope that's going to make everything easier for people. Um, the example is just a, a use case that I have um, found handy in the past uh, where I want to capture the video stream, send it over my network, and, and view it on my laptop. But any GStreamer example should work with uh, just replacing the libcam resource in uh, pipelines. Raspberry Pi have been fantastic working with um, libcamera. They, they, they jumped on board. Uh, they were looking themselves for how can we move away from the proprietary uh, GPU implementation that I had. And we had a kind of a, uh, a nice collision of timings that they were trying to move to the open. We were trying to support this, and, and that worked really well. Um, and they've jumped right on board. Um, and it's not been as smooth a transition as we'd hoped. Uh, I think everything's taken longer. Uh, and as I say, we've, some of the users have found frustrations from this change and, and this uh, new system that has appeared. But it really does bring a lot of advantages that now you can take a Raspberry Pi uh, and almost any camera can work with any device. Uh, so Raspberry Pi's old stack, they used to support three cameras that they produce. But now you can take cameras from Argicam or Vision Components and uh, the responsibility or the ability to integrate that camera into a platform is open. And I think that's amazing. Um, even the other way, um, I can now take Raspberry Pi cameras and integrate those into other platforms. So one of the, for me, one of the best things about the camera is I can take any camera and run it on any platform, uh, and we can handle all the glue in the middle. Um, but they provide, uh, uh, yeah, OK, so they, they have uh, lib camera apps. Um, Sometimes I find that a little frustrating because the lib camera apps are written by Raspberry Pi. They're not written by us, um, but they are targeted to the Raspberry Pi platform. Uh, but it does provide a, a good uh, sample point to show how the APIs can be used as well. And I would like to think that those applications will run on any platform that is supported by lib camera. Uh, but Raspberry Pi are under no obligation to support the other platforms because they obviously have their uh, target. Um, so on top of all that, we've built Python integration. Uh, and there's two layers to that. We have native Python bindings for libcamera, which matches the, uh, tries to match the API that would be the native C++ API. But Python uh, is very well supported on Raspberry Pi in their old stack, and they have Pi Camera. So Raspberry Pi also wanted to make sure that the, there was an easy uh, transition for Pi Camera users. So on top of the libcamera Python API is Pi Camera 2. And I've always, even on Pi Camera, I was amazed by how little code you need to capture a picture and show it on the screen, um, and still actually offer quite a lot of flexibility. Libcamera started out uh, targeting Chrome OS devices. Um, with a lot of thanks to Google, that was kind of the, the driving force to actually uh, kickstart the project. Uh, so we do target an Android HAL implementation, um, which uh, is used by Chromebooks. So here I've got a, uh, a Soraka device. Uh, it's an HP X2, I think. Um, and this is my home lab at home with, uh, I just keep a Lego man in front of the camera because I, I use it for testing. Uh, so this already works. There's still quite a bit of way to go on the Android integration, um, but it is functional. We can make video calls with it. We can use the camera app. But there's uh, di several layer levels of support with the Android camera help, and, and we're constantly trying to add, um, further improve our Android implementation. 
What I like, though, is that um, even though, again, Raspberry Pi isn't supported by Chrome OS or Android directly, there are builds that uh, the community have now taken, and I've seen Chrome OS running on a Raspberry Pi using libcamera, uh, and I believe that there's been uh, an engineer who's taken the same path to run Android on, or AOSP on a Raspberry Pi using libcamera. We have um, one last hope for those who really don't want to do anything uh, in that we have a V4R2 compatibility layer. We kind of think of this as our, our last uh, resort. Um, it, it's not expected to be efficient or, or full-featured, but using an LD preload, we can wrap all the calls that uh, an application would normally make to open, close, uh, ioctal for the commands going to V4R2 themselves, and we can present a lib camera device as if it was a V4R2 device. And that sounds great, um, but it, it's not necessarily going to be the best solution for everything. But uh, we created a little script called libcamerify. No one has to care about all of this underlying implementation. Uh, you can prefix your application with libcamerify, and it should abstract a lib camera device as if it was V4R2. Um, that only works if your application is using the these calls in the first place. So it, it's not a catch-all or, or a saving grace for everything. Um, and it still needs a bit more development, so um, we've got more to go there. Internally in LibCamera, we have our own test tools, which is actually what most people see when they first start using LibCamera because they're built in, and it's the tools you get when you compile it yourself. So we've got QCAM as a QT5 application, which also serves as a bit of reference code for how to interact with libcamera. Um, and cam is our Swiss army knife, which is kind of not ever expected to be a, an application for users to uh, be a product or anything like that. It, it's, it's a test tool. But that gives us a lot of flexibility on how we manage and operate the stack. Um, the pictures themselves, I, I put those there intentionally. The kernel provides test uh, drivers, uh, Vimc and Vivid. And that's really helpful for testing all of this stuff without hardware. You don't actually have to have a camera connected. Uh, Vimc provides a sensor type interface, and Vivid is really great for me because it produces almost every pixel format. So I, can, I, I find that very helpful for testing advanced features. Uh, oh, I meant to say, actually, uh, QCAM is getting, uh, had a summer, of student, a summer of code student on it this summer as well. So that has been improved recently and we're going to have more control support on there. Um, and we've got a really nice feature called the capture script, which lets us uh, produce uh, test scripts so that we can set commands to operate the sensor and make sure things are repeatable. Uh, my colleague Jacopo uh, gave a presentation uh, pre-COVID now um, where he did live coding demo of how to use the camera. I thought that was a great talk, uh, and very brave of him to do live coding. Uh, but what that produced is a, a utility called SimpleCam. And whenever people ask me questions about how do I get started with the API, I'll put them here, because it's completely over-documented application to show this is why you're opening this or why you're having that. Uh, so it's very helpful um, as a starting point. And I actually also use this for my testing because I, I make sure I keep it up to date. Uh, every time I do a build or our internal CI builds, uh, it gets run just as a fully external project to um, validate that we can still capture. Uh, the tool itself only runs the capture and prints the metadata. It doesn't deal with any presenting of the, the frame. So now onto the fun bit for me. Uh, the demo that uh, we had on Wednesday was all about trying to show more real, more user-facing use cases for uh, the camera. And back in May, uh, I met up with the Pipewire developers, uh, George and uh, Wim, and uh, I went there with a single goal. Um, the, the Surface Go here, 2 here that we've got, uh, there's a big community of Linux Surface users, and they install Linux, and the camera doesn't work until the camera. And they're doing all sorts of workarounds to be able to make a video call on their laptop. And that, uh, I felt bad about that uh, at a personal level even, because 
it, it should be better. So when I met up with Pipewire guys, I really wanted to see uh, the ability to make a video call through Chromium, just going to meet.jitsi uh, and, and have that work. Uh, this was the last hour of the week, and we had it working, so I'm smiling. Uh, but you'll note the colors are wrong. There's two windows because we actually had to do horrible workarounds. Um, but the proof of concept was there. And the general premise is that we have our any supported devices going through pipe, uh, lip camera into Pipewire. And I, I said before that there's a lot of things out of scope from lip camera. And security or managing access control is one of them. But Pipewire provides that. If you use your phone and it pops up to say, this application would like to use your camera, do you want to allow or deny it? Lip camera is going to always say yes. But Pipewire and the portals are, are going to provide that ability to say, uh, to pre present that opportunity to the user to say, yes, I, I'm willing to capture my image. So the HTG portal is quite important for that. And Pengutronics, I'm not sure I can see. Ah, my, Mikael, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong, I'm sorry, um, did amazing work. And so I went to this uh, Pipewire hackathon, and almost that week I discovered uh, the work that Pengotronics have been doing. And everything I wanted, this connection between Pipewire and WebRTC, they'd been working on it. Uh, and I, I was very happy because that's what I was able to integrate to produce the, the demo by the end of the week. And that allows Chromium or Firefox or the browsers to then talk to the web conferencing utilities. Uh, and so that's what I had uh, my goal then to present here this week at the demo, which I'm glad to say we succeeded. Uh, so we actually had two demos, but the, the one that I'm talking about here is the lower half, where we had a Raspberry Pi talking uh, to a Surface Go 2. Both of those devices require Lib Camera to operate the, the uh, the images, uh, and I just had them going as a video call between them. And so we were set up in the middle of the hall, and the colors are now right. So I managed to fix that on Friday night, so I was happy. Uh, there is still some work to do. Um, we need to help see Pengotronics' work fully upstreamed. Um, there's still some negotiation of the formats to handle within Pipewire. Um, for the demo, uh, it wasn't all smoke and mirrors, but I did hard code the sizes just to make sure that the demo worked. Um, and unfortunately, the codex didn't work. If I'd, I wanted to let people join the call as well, but if I started opening it up, it probably would have crashed. But uh, I wasn't bothered about the decoders. Uh, I wanted to prov uh, ensure that the cameras were functioning. Um, so it's getting there. Uh, I, I hope that within six months, this is going to be much more generally available um, and We'll help wherever we can with Pengotronics and uh, the integrations. So, I said a lot of this talk has been about my role of Lib Camera being the community support hat. Um, so, I want to go through some of the applications that have contacted me and, and uh, not just about work that we've done, but where other people have already started using Lib Camera and what other people can do. Uh, this, uh, I've had quite a lot. Uh, Motion is an application that uh, people can run on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and again, as I said, uh, we've now, we're now in a position where users start trying to f take on the lib camera stack, and that bumps into applications that, almost out of the blue, they're, they're saying, can you make your application work with the lib camera? And they weren't anticipating that. We, can't, we couldn't tell the world you all now need to switch, switch to lib camera before it was completed. So the motion developers um, have a, a GitHub repository, and there were issues there that I ended up following, um, looking to help people support it. And, and I did try to help propose lib camera native API implementation for motion. Uh, but again, the, the C++ was rejected. He, he didn't want C++ within his framework. And, and that's understandable, but he did also, also sort of have this reason that he was trying to rewrite his application in C++ with Motion Plus. So it's not the end of the world. Um, and uh, while it hasn't been done yet, I believe there's scope for native lib camera integration within Motion Plus, which will help all the users. Um, 
The libcamerify script that I mentioned about the V4L2 preload, uh, I have heard that that works in some use cases. I've also heard that people have found it doesn't always work. So um, I, unfortunately, I can't test every application in every combination. So uh, in, in that kind of scenario, I need people to say what they found didn't work and report it. And, and we will try and help fix it. Um, this one comes close to home for me because I have a 3D printer at home and I run Octoprint and uh, it uses MJPEG Streamer. And like many users of Octoprint, I have a Raspberry Pi with a camera so that I can get a live stream of my 3D print. And of course it didn't support the camera, so it broke. <laughs> uh, we've, um, I haven't really expressed who Argicam are, but Argicam make camera that are now supported by Raspberry Pi devices, uh, target the Raspberry Pi. They actually support a lot of other platforms. Uh, and so they've been trying to improve lip camera support as well. Uh, and they actually took MJPEG Streamer, added lip camera support, and made it work, which is great. But now I see this uh, split of the community of we need to work out how to make sure that that is either upstreamed or managed. But um, with the nature of open source software, MJPEG Streamer itself is, is also forked from an old source project, so um, I'm not even 100% sure what the correct route for upstreaming that is. Uh, the very frequently asked question is OpenCV <laughs> support with libcamera. Um, we have advertised, again, that we're trying to get, get more engineers to work on this. Uh, we, we advertised that we would off support a Google Summer of Code student to work on OpenCV integration with the camera. Unfortunately, this year, no one took it up. Um, but I believe OpenCV is a great target to add lip camera natively. Um, it may even go through uh, Pipewire in some platforms, but or it can already use the GStreamer element. Um, you can use a, an app sync, an app source, to uh, use a GStreamer pipeline to get data into OpenCV. And we have a GStreamer element for, for that, so it can already be used. Um, I said about the libcamerify, this came up again. Um, I had one user uh, using the vfr 2 adaptation layer, and he then found that he couldn't set the frame rates. And so he added support, he's got a patch. Uh, it's not yet upstream, it needs a bit more work, but um, that's it. All of these use cases, I need people to try it, find out what does or doesn't work, ideally, work on fixing it because we are finite resources. Uh, and, and I will always help anyone who is trying to tackle it themselves. Uh, and then we can work to improving the ecosystem. I, the one at the top I, I felt like deserved a, a special mention. Um, Eric at Red Hat is creating a, a little application called TwinCam, which is a, a nice pun on the name. Uh, it's derived from our CAM utility. Uh, and they're making a fast boot uh, um, camera for automotive use cases. So you boot up and it will instantly show the cameras. And, and he's been very active in our community, supporting um, us with fixes and, and bug reporting and, and development. Uh, and adding features, he added uh, SDL support uh, to CAM, which was nice. Uh, ConStatus is a really interesting project uh, that will let you set up a web page you can tie in cameras and present them uh, through a home server. Um, and the developer there contacted us through IRC. Uh, he asked a few questions, but he, he just got on and did it, and he implemented native lib camera integration into his platform. So that already supports lib camera mm -hmm. directly. Um, there's more that I would like to see use lib camera, but we need either those applications or, or more engineering resources to, to work on that. Uh, megapixels is an interesting topic um, that is ultimately the example where I've said they've chosen to manage all of this complexity themselves so far. And then they have a couple of any files per platform, and that means they know which devices to open, static configuration of media controller, uh, but it still doesn't scale, and it means that on those devices you can't now make a video call. Uh, and more than that, uh, on the PinePhone Pro with the Rock Chip 3399, 
you have an ISP. And someone has to do those three A loops to manage the ISP. And so we do believe that megapixels could use libcamera natively. Uh, Dorota from Purism is working on this. So uh, they are looking at it as well uh, for their Purism phone. The GNOME camera app is, is a really nice uh, redesign of a camera app, uh, almost to, to complement or replace cheese. Um, it uses LibAperture, which is all part of the same project, uh, to abstract how they grab the camera. LibAperture, I could certainly see, could have native lib camera integration. Or, because it is the desktop application, uh, Pipewire Camera Portal would be a really good use case for that. So, um, if anyone wants to work on a GNOME camera app and integrate uh, XDG Camera Portal into that, that would be a brilliant uh, way to spend your time. Uh, and I'll help, uh, and I'm sure there's plenty of community members that can help with that. So, beyond that, uh, we've we had other people ask questions on how to use lib camera or, or how to do things, but they haven't always told me what they're building. Um, so these are kind of a summary of the ones that I'm aware of. Uh, but if you are creating something with cameras, and I see a lot of faces, so I hope there's lots of people using it now, um, please let me know what you're doing. I, I want to know. I want to help. I want to make sure it works. If you get bugs, I will help you fix them, and, and we will help you fix them. Um, uh, we just need to know about it and how people are using it. Um, so, what can we do? I've said how it's harder for people to now use the uh, cameras. And a lot of what I felt is I, I see a lot of resistance to change. There's a lot of pulling. Um, so in my mind, I have to find ways to make that easier for people to realize that it's, it's something can, they can do. Um, with the advent of platforms like the Surface Go, where this is going to become a requirement, you're not, your app is not going to work on a, a Surface or a, even the Dell or HP laptops that have these cameras. You're not going to be able to capture images from the camera without lib camera. So there's going to be that impetus that they need to do something. I hope that lib camera will make that visible to them, that they can do something about it, uh, but we need to make it as easy as possible for them. I already mentioned that I really hope to see the WebRTC integrations and, and the Chromium integrations to get upstream as soon as possible, and we'll help where we can. But um, that will fix real users, the majority of real users' use cases where they want, they've got a laptop and they just want to make a video call. Um, so that's ongoing development. Um, I haven't yet posted the slides, but I will after this, and those links can be found. Um, but this is kind of my last point, I hope. Um, this is the tricky part that we've tried not to declare a stable ABI or API. And I fought both sides of this. <laughs> um, we've always till now said, well, the best version of LibCamera to use is the latest. But I don't think we can continue to say that. Uh, distributions are screaming for a tag. They just want to say, this is the version that we're using. And we do provide a version string that is generated, but they need to be able to say, this is the version of LibCamera that we are providing. Because now applications need to be able to build on multiple distributions. And they, if we're not going to have a stable API, they need to be able to say, I build against version 0.1 or 0.2. And, and I fully accept that we have to do that. So I'm going to work on this next week. Uh, it is coming as soon as I can. Um, and more than that, we need a better CI infrastructure. We have homegrown CI build that runs on my PC at home, on Laurent's PC, uh, but that's not scaling. Um, so I've been talking to Dan Stone even this week, and I would like to see uh, integration of LibCamera on the free desktop platforms or even GitHub Actions, and those CI scripts can be integrated in the LibCamera project themselves, so that if you make patches to LibCamera, you know that they can be tested. And if we have runners in our labs, then they can run on real hardware. But I think we need to do all that now, which I will be working towards. I want to say thanks to everyone. Like I said, this talk is really about other people's work, um, particularly uh, the Pipewire guys who have 
from the start, supported Lib Camera without needing much from us at all, so that was really good for us. Um, Pengatronics, uh, thank you. <laughs> you have made my world better. Um, <laughs> Like I said, I went to that hack fest in Berlin with the name of within a week, let's see what I can do. And almost on the first day, I found someone else has done it. Um, I just had to do integration, so that was good. Raspberry Pi, of course, uh, they have um, been the most visible user of LibCamera. Um, and that has uh, actually been beneficial for us because now we have lots of users. Um, not all projects like users, but uh, they, they do help find what we need to do. Um, and uh, the other platforms that we've got are helping drive algorithm development to make the support better for everywhere. And of course, Chrome OS has really kicked off the project. So thank you all and to everyone I've missed. Um, in summary, cameras have got complicated and they are everywhere. And these issues are going to be on devices you want to buy. Uh, I won't go into the IPU6 discussions where Greg said, do or do not buy a specific device. Um, but we are getting better. We've got more support for applications uh, coming through. And Pipewire is providing what we need for the desktop environment. And within the framework of LibCamera, we're trying to make it easier for applications to use our software. And I'm out of time, more or less. So uh, have we got any questions? Thank you very much. Oh, you've got one minute for questions. I'm happy. I have an online question. Oh, we have an online question, yes. Is the ISP of ISSHMP mm -hmm. supported? Yes. That is what the demo was. So, yes, the IMX8 M Plus is supported. Um, I've got a whole different spiel I could talk about that. Uh, so, please find me afterwards if you want to. Um, it is, we have kernel patches, they're going upstream. We have lib camera support that is as good as in. Um, and we are working actively on developing the algorithms to improve the image quality. Um, so yes, it, it is imminently supported. Yeah, so you mentioned C++ being an issue for C programs. Um, do you actually have C bindings, or do you plan on writing them? Uh, we do not have C bindings. Uh, I think it may be useful in the future to provide C bindings, uh, but we haven't got resources to do that right now. If you want to partake in that, please do. Uh, but GStreamer is a C API, so you can use GStreamer as a C interface into LibCamera already. Any more? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>